It just so happens, and it wasn't planned, so I can't claim credit for it, but it worked out that as we're going through the parables on the kingdom of heaven, that this week we're on the parable of the leaven. Now, why is that significant? It, it appears that as Jesus was talking to the people, that Jesus was one who acknowledged the women's presence and uplifted women especially compared to the norms of society in that day. And so the previous parables have been about seeds and fields. That was in Bible times, whose work? Men's work. But our Savior then, with women sitting in the group, then gives a parable about what would be common for them and what they did every day. Hence, Mother's Day weekend in our series, The Parable of the Leaven, fell most appropriately. We've got a kid sermon quiz. We do have some kiddos with us. And so we'll cover it. And I, I, I know a little secret. I figured this out. The, the bigger kids, even those with gray hairs, they like the kid sermon quiz too. Yeah, they do. It helps them pay attention too. So here it is. What state is between Alabama and Louisiana? Some of you got that memorized and you know it. That's fine. The little kids might have to listen. No looking on your phones. Arkansas, Mississippi, Florida, or Texas. What? Uh, this isn't the end. You do that at the end of the sermon. What was thrown in a story? I'm going to tell a story and something's going to be thrown in the story. A ball, a roll, a frisbee disc, or a sock. Three, Lauren, my daughter Lauren, cooked something for the whole school. It was A, flat pizza, B, banana pudding, C, soured soup, or D, pickled bird feet. Four, what was hanging, oh, should be a G on there, what was hanging from the ceiling? Yeah, I need a proofreader, I really do. I put this stuff together. A rope was hanging from the ceiling, a fan was hanging from the ceiling, a biscuit was hanging from the ceiling, or a snake was hanging from the ceiling. And so, how many times do we say the word within? There's no lollipop today. That is correct, right? You have them. Can they... You're not going to have very many come get them today, but if you have them, it'll hold them out and let them grab them. Okay. If you count the word within, I was just going to let you keep count and maybe save up for future lollipops and we just dump some on you in the future. But uh, anyway, so here we go. Miss Bev is right up here on our front today, the front uh, your right, and she'll have lollipops if you count how many times did we say the word within. We continue with our series, The Unexpected Kingdom dealing with the parables that say the kingdom of heaven is like. Today we're going to see the kingdom of heaven is like how God's at work all the time within us. It's titled, Hidden Work of the Heart. How many of you like road trips? You like driving across the country. As an adult, I've come to, at times, enjoy them based on the number of kids that are in the car. As a child, I enjoyed them about as much as my children seem to. I dreaded them. And we lived right here in Mississippi, right between Louisiana and Alabama, Mississippi. So when we had a road trip... It almost invariably went towards uh, Texas through Louisiana or toward Florida through Alabama. And so Mississippi was right there between Louisiana and Alabama. So if you want to go from Louisiana to Alabama across Mississippi, how long does it take? One Mississippi. It's true. You say, well, what if you want to go across up by Jackson, the middle of the state, the wide part of the state, there on I-20, it's still just one Mississippi across there. What if you're down on the coast and you go across on I-10, the skinny part, it's still one Mississippi. You see, one Mississippi, that's a way that we keep time, but it's relative, right? Because driving across Mississippi, no matter how you do it, it's still one Mississippi. Well, when I was a kid, we took a trip through Alabama from Mississippi, 
down into Florida to Disney World. And on the way back, my dad wanted to stop at a restaurant in Foley, Alabama. Now, they have three of these restaurants that I'm aware of in the world. One is in Foley, Alabama. One is in Ozark, Missouri. We got to live by that one a few years until I burn out on eating there. And then the other one is in Sykeson, Missouri. And my dad said, it is the greatest place. We have to stop in this, at this restaurant on the way back in Foley, Alabama, because they throw you rolls. That's right, Lambert's Cafe. And you eat there. I mean, it's, it's wonderful smelling, wonderful tasting, um, extremely filling, um, fattening southern food. Oftentimes, especially the one in uh, Ozark, Missouri, because it was by Branson, which is a popular tourist destination for the Midwest, would oftentimes have lines out the door. And as you stood there in line, you could smell the food. And, and I believe that I began to gain weight just from smelling that food. And so Lambert's Cafe, and they literally have a guy rolling a cart through the restaurant yelling, Throw rolls! Throw it up, and you hold your hands up, and he will throw you. That's right, he across the restaurant, he will throw you a roll. How cool is that? Man, I was wondering where's that been all my life? I got a little facetious when I first got to go there. I was younger though, so I claim, you know, that I was younger. Whether I gathered up some rolls and then I would wait and when he was throwing them, I would throw them too because I wanted to throw rolls in a restaurant. And um, anyway, I didn't get kicked out or nothing. It, was, it ended up working out, but throw rolls. I was amazed you can eat all you want and they throw you rolls. We're going to see today as we dig into a parable about bread. Rolls are bread. I love bread that God is at work within us. Today's passage, Matthew 13, 33. Let's turn there. Matthew 13, 33. Here it is. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 33. It's right after the parable of the sower. In fact, this is only found, this parable, in two, two Bible books, uh, Matthew and Luke. Both times, it appears, it follows the parable of the mustard seed, which we covered last week. And it says here, in verse 33, another parable he spoke to them. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. We're going to do our whole sermon on those words right there. Now, before you say, well, this will be a very short sermon. Oh my, I hope that it will be a short sermon. What happens when you begin to study is like what leaven does to bread, it expands, and it expands, and it expands. And there's plenty there. To keep us, we could do a whole sermon series on this verse in reality, but we'll keep it precise today. We can see an immediate tie to the sermon last week, and at the mustard seed, it was small, and then it grew into something very large. It was a tiny mustard seed, right? And it could grow as high as, as 12 foot tall. And we saw many points from that parable that show us that God has great plans for us. Today, the parable of 11, like the dough rising, expands our key thought that God's at work within us. And so we just read the verse, the kingdom of heaven is like a woman who took leaven and hid it in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. Well, let's think about that for a moment. What is it that the leaven does? Well, it makes bread rise. But not everyone's even aware of, of leaven today. I mean, our flour typically comes self-rising flour. Everything's in it, right? And so, I don't, I'm, I'm just talking. I don't really know about kitchen stuff. I, I'm doing my best. I've tried to study up. But, I mean, I worked everything at Piggly Wiggly except in the deli, you know. So, I knew how to run the whole store except the cooking part. And then when I got out to Weimar College, they said, well, we got a Mississippi boy. We ought to put him in the kitchen. They got over that real quick. They put me in the kitchen. They had me blending something, and it was green. I think it was like a 
I, I think it was their version of guacamole, although I remember guacamole not being in the blender now, but it was green, and they had me blending it, and they said, take the spoon and scrape it off the sides and back down into the blender, and so I'm doing this, and, and uh, the spoon went too far down, and the blender took it out of my hand and began to eat it as it slung it around inside the blender and put green stuff all over the kitchen. So they decided I could go work in forestry where I wanted. I didn't do it on purpose. But so I'm, I'm doing my best to give a message here that Jesus spoke to women about something they would know about, and yet I don't know much about it. I've, I've studied up some. I even talked to, to Pat and got some input yesterday to, to understand it better. And yet... The way that they did it back then is different from now. And so we've only been able to take that so far. And so I remember that um, leaven, we use yeast today to make bread rise. And my daughter Lauren, she was working in a cafeteria at the school where we lived in Washington, Auburn Adventist Academy. And she had been working there, and she, she's a great kitchen hand. And so uh, the, the manager of the kitchen entrusted her to make pizza for the whole school. And she, she was, what, freshman at this time or, or, or before your eighth grade, yeah, eighth grade summer, something like that. She had been working there, uh, getting going, and, and asked her to make uh, pizza for the whole school. And she said, there, there's the, the dough or whatever, make sure you, you add leaven. And so she didn't know what leaven was, hadn't encountered that yet. And so the boss is gone, and she starts looking through the kitchen, trying to figure out what it was she's supposed to put on this stuff or in this stuff, and she finds nutritional yeast flakes. Add yeast. So she gets the nutritional yeast flakes, and uh, it was apparently some very flat pizza. Flat pizza. So kids quiz, what did Lauren make for the whole school? Flat pizza. Pizza. Not the same thing, the yeast. It, yeast or leaven makes bread expand, makes it rise. Okay? I was at my grandma's house and she, she used to make everything from scratch, but as she got uh, really, really old, she moved into an apartment to joining my Uncle Jack's home and uh, she, she began to do things like use canned biscuits and stuff that years ago she never would have uh, even entertained that idea but she was slowing down and and simplifying and and she was going to cook biscuits for me and her i would go stay with with grandma just me and her and we were going to have breakfast uh, well i think it was lunch that day biscuits and she uh, had some uh, strawberry preserves she had made a few months ago and had been in the freezer and she was thawing them out and she set her what we called Whop Biscuits out on the counter. We never used the term canned biscuits. I thought everybody called them Whop Biscuits. The reason we called them Whop Biscuits, you've got to whop them on the counter to open them. So that's, that's what they are, they're Whop Biscuits. And so she set the Whop Biscuits out. Uh, you know, you can't make this stuff up. That's just how it was. So you set the Whop Biscuits out, and they were warming up while Grandma was letting the uh, strawberry preserves or jelly or whatever it was uh, thaw out from the freezer. And it was a little warm in the room, and in a little while we, we heard an explosion. It's kind of, the, the biscuits had popped open on their own. You see, that, that yeast in there will make them expand, and that usually starts pretty good after you open it. But, but as it warms up, it can, it can start to happen in there a little bit. And so the pressure was building, and the, the biscuits from their expansion exploded. Now, this, I believe this is the exact one we were using, uh, five biscuits. It was just me and Grandma. We only found, after the explosion, four biscuits. We looked everywhere. We looked anywhere. Where could the biscuits be? Finally, Grandma made lunch for us. Her and I made do on the four biscuits. And as we're finishing up lunch, Uncle Jack comes into the apartment and he said, Hey, how are y'all? I just wanted to come say hi. What is that hanging from the ceiling? The missing biscuit was hanging from the ceiling. That is a result of the expansion, in this case under pressure, that leaven or yeast can do to bread. It makes it expand. In this case, it made it explode. So why is the kingdom of heaven like 
leaven put in bread. Why is this the case? We'll come back to that. But first we must understand the elements in the parable so we can uh, see it expand in our minds. So what is leaven? Well, initially uh, I thought of stuff like this. You know, you got your, your, your fleshman's rapid rise yeast. And so uh, yeast, that's, that's leaven, right? Well, well, yes, but that's not what the parable is talking about. It's not as simple as tearing open a little packet of yeast and mixing in with your dough. What they were doing is what is called old dough leavening. A traditional method of leavening bread using a small piece of dough from the previous batch of bread to create a starter dough for the next batch. Now, that's a modern uh, uh, recipe site. Uh, recipetips.com, but you find the Bible commentaries comment on this over and over and over again that, that you had dough that uh, had fermented from the previous week that you pulled out and you added to it. Now, there were ways that you added it to your new flour. Uh, many say you just kneaded it in, but some are suggesting that what they did is they put it in water and they did their best to make little pieces and try to dissolve it in the water. And then pour that on it to mix it in so it would spread throughout the dough. I don't know what they did because we're not told. But we're kind of examining that, studying into that a little bit. And so we need a bit of an understanding as we're talking about this so that symbolisms won't be missed. That's why it's important to understand the way they were thinking when they saw it is there were certain symbolisms that Jesus had that they could easily pick up on. But if we don't know how it's done, we can miss out on those. And so God's work, uh, God's at work within us. Let's talk here, how much flour? It says three measures of flour. So they, they took the leaven, the old dough, and they mixed it with three measures of flour. That is in the Greek, tria sata, which is a little over a bushel of flour. That's right, it was meant to be shocking. Parables often have untrue-to-life circumstances in them to get people's opinions and make the story more interesting. Uh, in kitchen speak, modern kitchen speak, that would be about 144 cups of flour before it has risen. That's right. One source said it would be enough for 52 1.5-pound loaves of bread, about 80 pounds of bread. We're talking about a lot of flour. And so you imagine as Jesus starts telling the story, a woman at home getting out her piece of leaven, her old bread, dough that hasn't been cooked from previous week's batch, and she's getting ready to make her starter dough or to dissolve it in water or whatever her particular process happened to be. And now all of a sudden you hear how much. That is shocking in the parable. Three measures... More than a bushel? This is like about two five-gallon buckets full of flour. And then it rises and perhaps doubles or triples in size. I almost imagine her whole room <laughs> beginning to be filled with flour, okay? And then people would be thinking the story through. So Jesus is communicating in this way. It would, it would be like if Jesus said, a lady went to gather some apples one morning to make an apple pie. And when she got home, she peeled her 1,200 apples. That would, you know, the, the, the quantity is like, what? Or a lady went to the river to wash clothes. And when she got to the river, she had 854 pounds of clothes to wash. What? what? You know, it was a, a, a large sum, shocking, more than someone would do in their home. And by the way, bread was made in the home, not so much purchased at the marketplace back in those days. And so, God's at work within us. We're going to see this begin to develop a little bit more. The parable, let's read it one more time. We're going to extrapolate then a lot of, a lot of key and important thoughts. There's a lot of good stuff here. And we see it here, Matthew 13, verse 33. Let's read it one more time. And it says, in God's Word today, it says, Matthew 13, verse 33, Another parable he spoke to them, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. This is the dough from last week's batch. Which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. Here's your expanded lessons from the leaven. 
power to change comes from outside. The flower as it is, without something from outside being added to it, doesn't expand on its own. In this particular parable, it's very much like we're the flower and we need something added from the outside to us. All of the self-help stuff that exists, the powers within you, that, that's not biblical, it's not Christian, it's New Age, garbly gook. The power to change comes from outside the flower. Two, grain must be crushed into flour. If you take leaven and you mix it with wheat that hasn't been ground in the flour, or with corn that hasn't been ground in the flour, it doesn't do anything. As the flour, sometimes we've got to be ground down a little bit. Sometimes we're just too proud for God to help us out. The work begins on the inside. Some people look around at problems and issues in their life and they think, I want to come to God, and they think the plan is to start cleaning up their lives and fixing the problems, but they're starting on the outside. But the way to fix the problem is actually on the inside, like the leaven, God's power in our lives works from the inside out, not the outside in. Another one, you can't reverse the process. You have an experience with God, and that's going to have changed you permanently. Oh, you can, you can turn away from God, you can do different things, but you've actually, the experience can't be taken away. You see, when bread went through a leavening process, it was changed. It had fermented. You can't say, oh, I'm going to pick this leaven back out now. No, it is now a different organism than it was. Quite literally. You can't reverse the process. Here's another one. Jesus has repurposed symbols. He did it in this case. He's done it in many cases where, you know, you might remember the, the serpent, the children of Israel being bit by snakes. And uh, Moses was told to make a serpent and hold it up on a stick and when people looked they would live. And the snake, it was a symbol of sin. But it was a symbol of a deliverer from sin. And the Bible says, He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us. And it symbolizes our sin upon Jesus on the cross. And Jesus in John 3, right before He gave the famous verse, John 3, 16, He started saying, I believe it was in verse 14, that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man, that's my Jesus, be lifted up. Wait, like a serpent was lifted up? Jesus needed it? Yes, He took a symbol that was a bad symbol, a snake, a serpent in the Bible, and makes it a good symbol. One who took on the weight of sin for us. Leaven was a bad symbol in the Bible. That's another reason this parable was so catchy to everyone. Everyone is sitting there listening to Jesus, and He says, the kingdom of heaven is likened to leaven. Oh, hold on a second. Had anybody else said the kingdom of heaven is like to leaven? No, they said even when the Passover comes, get the leaven out of your house. It's a fermenting process. Get it away, put it away, do away with it, and have unleavened bread. It was a symbol of contamination. It was something that had been fermented, being intentionally put into your food. It ended up making the food taste better and be more palatable and all of that. And so that's why people uh, did it and why they still do it. But it was a symbol of uh, sin. Jesus also used it as a symbol of sin when he said, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. It was a symbol for something bad that Jesus repurposed. Jesus takes things that are not good, including sometimes symbols and especially people, and transforms them. Here's a quote for you. He takes distasteful characters and transforms them and then transforms society through them. God's at work within us. Absolutely. We continue with expanded lessons from leaven. Right here from this parable. All of these are being extrapolated. These are when you study the passage, the background, the information we have available. All of these, best I can tell, are solid. Small amounts grow into a lot. That's right. Sometimes just a positive interaction with someone showing them the love of Jesus can eventually grow into a full-fledged uh, 
Christianity within their heart. Them accepting Jesus, changing their life. Small amount grows into a lot. This parable is a caution against a defeatist attitude. That's right. Have you been there before? I have, so I'm not knocking you if you have. But have you felt like your Christian experience isn't growing like it should? Or that your Christian walk isn't having the impact on others you thought it would? He says the kingdom of heaven is like leaven that was hidden bread. Something very small. God in His time can do great things with it. Just because it starts small or seems small does not mean you should entertain a defeatist attitude. Here's something else for you. Cautions, or excuse me, have to save some for next time. What happens in the field if you harvest and eat all of the corn back in the day? One of the first priorities, you might not save the first corn. You might be real hungry and ready for some. But before you pull the last corn out of the field and eat it, what do you have to do on the farm back in the day? You have to preserve your seed. And even if famine hits, if you give up and eat your seed, <laughs> uh-oh, you're in trouble even if the weather gets better. You have to keep your seed. Well, in the same way, with the leaven, you have to save some for next time. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait a long time for it to start fermenting naturally. You can't just make bread. Here's another one. This is true of leaven. The dough that already has the fermentation in it, you have to have it to pass it on. You can't share a Jesus with people that you don't know. You have to have an experience to share an experience. You have to have a testimony to give a testimony. You must have it to pass it on. And last but not least, don't forget what happens once the bread's already and done, after the leaven has been kneaded in, it goes into the oven. As the Lord works upon our hearts, He's at work on the inside. The leaven working and changing and preparing us, there's going to be trials and tribulations. It goes into the oven. God's at work within us. Absolutely. Absolutely. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. Why is the kingdom of heaven like this well at first reading it might be hard to see but after examining all of these things that can be seen that leaven does and the purpose in thinking it through it is crystal clear why the kingdom of heaven starting small a change from without coming in changing from the inside expanding and growing and taking something that wasn't desirable and making it exquisitely desirable i happen to like bread so Exquisitely desirable. It makes perfect sense to me why the kingdom of heaven is like that. It takes something and changes it from the inside out, from something beyond it, and makes it wonderful. God is at work within us. How is it with you in your life? Are you allowing the Lord to work within you? Oh, I hope you haven't fallen into you've got to fix your own problems before you can come to God. No. It's a work that begins on the inside and works its way out. Are you responding in your life to God working, allowing Him to change you, which is what the leaven does as it changes the bread, and allowing Him to expand you in goodness and allowing Him to prepare you for what He has in store for you? If not, make that commitment today. Don't try harder. Surrender more. Remember, the grain had to be ground down to powder before the leaven can do its work. Surrender before our Lord today. Our kids' sermon quiz. What state is between Alabama and Louisiana? Arkansas, Mississippi, Florida, or Texas? One Mississippi, that's right. Two, what was thrown in a story? A ball, a roll, a frisbee disc, or a sock? A roll, throwed rolls, that's right. Lauren cooked something for the whole school. It was A, flat pizza, B, banana pudding, C, sour soup, or D, pickled bird feet. A, flat pizza, that's right. 
<laughs> and number four, what was hanging or hanging from the ceiling? A rope, a, bis- uh, a fan, a biscuit, or a snake? A biscuit. How many times did we say the word within? You can take that up with Sister Bev if you want your lollipop. At this time, stand as we close in prayer. <clears throat> Loving Father, we thank you for the opportunity we've had to open your word and to study together today. We thank you for this parable. May it continue to grow in our minds, expand and prepare us for your kingdom, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.